Hey guys, what's up? My name is VK. Welcome to PC Tutorials Episode 2. Today we're encountering my first request ever on a tutorial. As I said, maybe in the pre previous video, I have been making tutorials for around 2 to 3 years, and here is the request I got. So, thanks to dudes with glasses, I will make today an effect. The Superman Takeout effect. Everyone really has started to do, I've seen it a lot of lately when I watch YouTube videos from really amateur and beginners. They want to do a cool effect for Superman flying. Today we're encountering this problem, but let's make a very cool effect in After Effects. <laughs> So guys, just let's get us started. Uh, for the effect is made, you don't need particular After Effects, which I will be using. You can use this in pretty much any editing software. For example, if you're using Nuke, Motion or After Effects, the techniques are the same, only the buttons will change. Yes, so let's wrap up this start. So first thing we do, the first thing, we shoot our footage. So what you do, you ask your character to go somewhere center and plain. Ask them to go crunch and ask uh, ask them to jump straight up. Sorry my English. Uh, ask them straight up and then moving out of a scene. You're walking there, giving instructions and look ridiculous to your neighbors. For the tutorial part where you brought all your footage in After Effects or your particular area software you want to choose, you put your your footage, your clean plate, which we took in the footage afterwards when you asked your, uh, your character to go outside of the frame so you can catch a clean plate which will be particularly needed in this situation afterwards. So you take your shot and footage on a new comp, on your timeline, and now let's make cool stuff. So what you do, you split your layer in two different parts. You split your layer when your character is right in the air. When he leaves the ground, split the layer with Command Shift D or Control Shift D, depends on your Mac or PC user. What you do when your character is out of frame, split your layer right there. So we can use the afterwards of that clip. Remember, have at least five seconds of clean plate because it'd be a such such a looping if you don't have a, a, a real and a really effective clean blade. So what you do, you split layers with Command Shift D, Control Shift D on your when your character leaves out the scene and use that as clean blade. Everything there we will use as nice footage. When you see when your character, when you split the layer where the character is right in the air, just left the ground. You mask around the subject like this. You take your masking tool by hitting G on your keyboard, mask around your subject. And then what we do, you freeze frame it. So what you do, you right click on the, uh, on the time lapse on the video line, go to time and freeze frame. Okay, so just a full notice, if you have your character which has a lot of movement, a lot of clothes which are flapping around the air, what you do, you can mask. You don't need to use freeze frame, which is easier in this, in this case to make this tutorial a little shorter. But if you have a lot of clothes with flapping in the air, mask path, three or four frames, mask, animate the mask path for your subject, for your character. Take three or four frames when you have freeze framed it. So you take the freeze frame, three or four frames, and position, animate the position to get the guy fly out of the scene. So you go to the first. First, first frame of the jump, when you lead off the air, put a keyframe there, go 3 or 4 frames forward and drag your character out of the frame, in the particular rotation and position you want him to fly out. It doesn't need to be straight up, I'm just saying it. So what you have done, done apply motion blur to the scene like this and you already having a pretty cool effect right there. You're still seeing there is this small like lagness when you're jumping in the air. So you're jumping slowly and then just pop up really fast. And that looks something we clean up right now. So what we do is we time remap it. So you go to the exact same thing, go to the previous, the first split layer before the jump, uh, go to time remapping by hitting uh, by right-clicking on the footage, go to time and time remap. 
when you're time remapping, put a keyframe when you are um, in the beginning of the launch, when you crawl down, and put a keyframe in the end of when you're just leaving. And then you're just dragging the last keyframe closer to the first keyframe for speeding up the launch. And now you see you having already a much smoother transition for a faster animation, a faster launch for your character. But as you see here, the character doesn't have the motion blur the launch itself had. So we gonna make it a lot more smoother. What you do is use the mask around your foot, uh, around yourself. You can roll the brush tool it or masking it manual with G uh, with your masking tool three or four frames before you jump in the air. So you get the three, three or four frames before the launch and three or four frames after the launch. So before the launch. So what we do, you go to FX and presets and, and go there and find directional blur. Go to the three, four frames where you have your time remap. Go there and keyframe the, the directional blur from zero to 30% on those three to four frames. And here you see we're already having a nice a much more nicer, smoother transition for the launch. Great job, guy! You're doing great. So, guys, now take a little break and watch me dance. <laughs> hey, guys! Welcome back for the little break and when we're over that urge it's time to clean up the little things that will sell this effect even more. So what we'll do I will bring out from my Action Essentials 2 library which is optional but if you have it's just great it's to tell the point of the eye to get this to work really cool sell this effect really good. So what I do I'll take my dust elements some debris and what I do I scale and position them and put some color correction so they're matching the scene. So, for making the crack image on the screen, on the ground, you don't need accent essentials. I will show you a really easy way, uh, easy way, now bang, way, how to make this effect even cooler when you're getting some really nice environment debris by hitting the ground cracked open. So what you do, you go to the, your favorite browser of choice, Google uh, or Yahoo, an image of cracked ground. This is the particular I used and I have a link in the description if you want to use the exact same I used for this project. So what you do, you take your crack, uh, your crack image down to your timeline. You put it on your time, uh, over the, all the other layers and pre comp it with Command Shift C or Control Shift D. You, it doesn't matter Control or Shift first. You can do it whatever you way. Anyway, so Command in Mac, Control in PC. What you do, you pre comp it, you make a, a, an ellipse mask and you position it and scale the uh, and make an animation for the scale and match it three dimensionally for the scene. And here you go, you have a crack on your, on your floor, on your ground. That's that easy, I know. All right. What we do, we pre comp everything for one comp, we can call this final, it doesn't matter. And what we do, we bring up our widescreen bars. You can do this. Uh, manually, or you can use, for example, red giant frames, which will crop your image uh, and crop your project to a widescreen to ultra widescreen. Do it your favorite way. I just put this because this clean up the edge and looks more cinematic. Then what we do? We animate a wiggle. I talked about wiggle in the last episode uh, when I just uh, when I teach you guys how to make a cool and pretty professional hologram screen. Uh, so if you want, if you're interested in that, check that. I'll get the link in the below. How you make a hologram screen. Back to effect. You gotta do wiggle. When you're doing wiggle, it's cool. So what you do, you when you pre comp hit position and Alt click on the stopwatch. You go and type wiggle open bracket 0.5 comma 25 close bracket. And plus, then you get, then you see the wiggle movement, but you see these black bars which are same because it's wiggling the whole comp and it's not being on the image itself. So what you do, you scale it up for, for example, 105% and the problem is solved. Hey guys, that wraps up this video for this part. Be sure to be the cool guy who thumbs up this video, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you dislike it, hope you didn't dislike it, and request, request anything. If you want to see some uh, really cool effect or review something, request it down below. I have got some requests already, 
here for the time being for the four weeks. I have not been making videos. I'm super excited to make those. And I'm telling you subscribers, they are coming in. And yeah, and the last but not least, subscribe to the channel. If you like this and if you want to see more, more of this kind, and you want to be one of the first who gets notified when a new video comes up to this channel, hit the subscribe button. That helps me a lot, keeps me motivated and keeps you uh, keeps me making happy happy videos for you guys when I can dance and teach you guys effect. And hey, comment below if you like this style of tutorials or tell me a style you want me to tutorials you want to make I directly record on or this different recorder you can see some cool things. It doesn't matter. Hey, here's my social links. Like me and follow me on Twitter, like me on Instagram, follow me on everything like me on Instagram, I know right? But hey, thanks for watching this video, hope you guys have a nice time and I'll see you in the next video. So peace out, have a nice day.